why can't we just get a anime adaptation of Tsukihime from Ufotable? Like that, that opening, like the, the openings they've done for this are just incredible. Like I just, it just makes me want Ufotable to do a Tsukihime anime just so goddamn much you don't even know. Uh, and of course there's the whole meme, the Tsukihime anime doesn't exist. Well, eh, it can if it's done right, and I really feel like Ufotable could do it justice if the openings are anything to go by. What is this place? A voice echoed in the darkness. Damp air. The smell of rot made me want to cry. A darkness that made her want to cry. All that melts her intellect. <laughs> what the hell is this place? I can't remember what happened a few minutes ago. I can't even remember where I was. Yeah, I'm not even sure what's going on here. Maybe this is the vampire's lair. I think I heard the men's voices. I feel like I went down there of my own volition. Or she was somehow in a trance and forced to go down here. I think I used an elevator. As I was falling, I felt like I kept pressing the stop button desperately, realizing that this was not a joking urban legend, but the truth about the city that I really shouldn't get involved in. Where the hell are we? But that was already in the past. For humans, time is irreversible. It is asymmetrical. As long as it is not symmetrical, we cannot return from the future to the past. What it comes down to. When she came to, she found herself in the middle of hell. Scared by the darkness, I put my hand on the wall. Rotten juice clings to my fingers. Fishy, soft. I cried and crawled my fingers, knowing that they were the knowing that they were the remains of splattered human guts. Because if you don't, you can't move on. I can't go forward into the darkness. I couldn't escape the sound of footsteps that had been following me since a while ago. Man, this is pretty fucking creepy. No, 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 no. I had no choice but to walk with my face twisted into a crumpled mess as I scraped out my guts. Ugh. That's nasty. <laughs> Every time I move forward, I hear a scream from within the walls, like metal being ground together. Are you human? Hey, don't go! Don't go! Mother? Mother? This is some horrifying shit. Let me out! Let me out! Let me out! Let me out! Jesus Christ. I, I, I knew this game was gonna get dark, but I didn't realize just how dark it was going to be. <laughs> I can't believe it's the voice of the same creature. It was a scream that made their throats and lungs burst. That much loss was fine, they shouted. But their bodies were no longer in control. It has no arms or legs, and hangs from the ceiling like a cloak. No, no, I don't want to die, I don't want to die! I ignore the pleas of the things that are already done and run away. Light, light, I just wanted light, because then I could escape. There is a goal, the men guiding us laughed. Then there must be a way out. It was the only way to save her, even though she knew it was a lie. Her barely remaining sanity continued to cling to that hope. Light, 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 light. I looked back at him. Come to think of it, she reminded herself she was not alone. He must have come with his girlfriend. That stupid man had brought this up. That's why I said, let's give it a try, just for fun. It's all his fault. I hope he dies. I hope he dies quickly. I hope he dies before I do. If only I could save myself. I'm the only one who could be saved, because I'm special. What? I didn't do anything wrong. There is no reason for this to happen to me. This kind of thing only happens to people who are more vulgar and dumber than me, or people who are more fortunate and lucky than me. It's not about me. I have nothing to do with it. I've lived a good life. I've lived a pretty normal life. That's why it should be someone else who's going through this. Wow. That's kind of a fucked up way to, lo uh, to look at things. What the? The dimness ceases. 
the, dar- the darkness fills in among them. She saw herself on fire. Oh, God. What's this? My hands are falling apart like ashes. The arm that I had stretched on the wall was now only up to my elbow. I looked down at my body in a panic. My clothes had long since been burned, my skin charred, and my organs and flesh exposed. The fat of the meat was burning so red and flaming that it was hard to look at. Good, she laughed. (laughs) Because. We finally got some light. Oh, yeah, she's totally lost her mind. (laughs) It's on fire. Wow, wow, wow. Look, I'm on fire. 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 Jesus Christ. A human model laughing loudly. (laughs) A human torch illuminates the darkness. That's it. Ooh. And then, well, at least she got killed before she completely burned to death. A stabbing blow of mercy. She burned up, spewing boiling blood. As if savoring the temperature, she drank down the fresh blood. Ew. What the fuck? That's nasty. Hell will return to its original darkness. Sol finished his minimal meal and traversed the hell of the Lord's absence. There's gotta be an error somewhere in there. (laughs) Behind him, countless bodies. A river of flames that turned both the lost and the dead, the former inhabitants of this cemetery, to ashes. It's cold here. Even the breath I exhaled was smoky. Leaving a trail of red slug-like slugs in its wake, the sluggish footsteps of the creature made their way to the ground. The heart of the true ancestors is in my hand. In order to kill the coveted prey that my servants had just discovered. Well, so far this guy is a bit more interesting than Nero and how he, uh... How he does things, let's just say. So basically what I can gather from that is this guy is taking people from the city and um, locking them up in his lair, turning some of them into zombies, into specifically those zombies that burn or whatever the hell, whatever the hell that was about. Um, Yeah, I I guess that's what, how, how they're, how they're created. That's pretty horrifying too. Yeah, it's a rather nice room. Yeah, it's definitely nicer than the room than, than how it looked in the original game. I guess I won't complain about spending the night in this one. Of course not. Arcoid looks around the hotel room happily. And you'll be the one paying for the room, Shiki. I was speechless at the turn of events. So, what do you want me to do? Be specific. Also, isn't this the soundtrack from Fate Hall of Taraxia? It sounds like the Fate Hall of Taraxia soundtrack. Did they just lift this from Fate Hall of Taraxia? <laughs> I'm moving on for now. My room is not suitable for protection. Well, let's go to a higher place with a better view. Yeah, like a luxury hotel suite. And this is it. Arcoid stopped a cab on the main street and traveled to the next town. Not only did we check into a room at one of the most luxurious hotels in the area, but we rented out the entire top floor. It was an amazing celebrity experience. I hope she could pay for all that. Oh, that's expensive! Yeah, you bet that- you bet it is. (laughs) Human building skills are really improving rapidly. What do you call this kind of thing? A hair's breadth? Daily progress? Well, I don't care either way. Look, look, look! Shiki, the alleyway we were in just now has become so tiny! Slightly opening the closed curtains, Arcoid enjoys the view from the window. I'm not really in the mood. Yeah, I wouldn't really be either. I I would have to take some time to process the fact that somebody who I just killed came back to life and is now trying to uh, tell me I need to work work for her in order to 
basically atone for my actions. This is not a hotel room, but, but more like a fort built on the top floor of the hotel. The curtains that block out the sun, the furniture that decorates the rooms, and the materials used for the walls and doors are several times more luxurious and sturdy than the average ones. Since we were renting out the top floor, no other guests would be coming to this floor. If you look closely, you can even see a monitor in the room that is showing the lobby on the first floor. It reminds me once again that the race that uses this room is such a privileged one. Let's hide here tonight. Oh, don't worry about the accommodation fee. I'm rich. I'll buy you a drink. Saying cheerfully, Arquaid moved away from the window. I told her I had a great view of the city, but she was tired of the bird's eye view of the city. Arquaid, what are you thinking? A sigh escaped my lips. Uh, what? I've got a lot on my mind. No, that's not the point. A man in a hotel room with a woman. I started to say something, then stopped. My only role is to keep an eye on this self-proclaimed vampire. You don't have to say anything extra. No, no, do what you want. You're weird, Cheeky. You're so unpredictable, suddenly angry and silent. Arkoid laughs, wondering what the deal is. <laughs> Meanwhile, over here, I stand close to the door and observe the room without being careless. It's the opposite of Arquaid, who is so relaxed. I was exhausted and went to rest, but if I sat down on the couch now, I would sink into the depths of the ocean. No matter how desperate I am, I can't be that defenseless. Shiki, do you want something to drink? There seems to be a lot of drinks here. Yeah, I think Shiki's a little underage. A cerebral voice came from the mini bar in the room. The bottle in Arquaid's hand was, needless to say, some sort of alcohol. You know, I'm underage and you're offering me alcohol. I was about to say something and stop talking. I don't know if she's underage or not. I'm not interested and I'm not going to ask. I'll choose later, more importantly. No matter how tired or bewildered you are, there's always something to ask. What is the woman in front of me? After all, how dangerous is the situation I'm in now? Pretty dangerous, especially considering what we just saw. <laughs> I can't even sit on the couch if I don't understand as much as I can, even if these things are not in my common sense. I have a question for you, though. We'll take a leisurely rest afterwards. What? I don't mind, but what's the matter? You're all dressed up all of a sudden. Maybe she was trying to say you're tense all of a sudden? I never let myself get carried away in front of you, but that's okay. I'm serious. After all, what's your purpose? Me? I'm just chasing vampires. Because killing vampires is what I do. Yeah, that's exactly what you said. But you're a vampire, aren't you? What, you still don't believe me, Shiki? Don't worry, I believe it as much as you do. What I'm saying is, why would you, a vampire, kill a vampire? That's crazy. Oh, you don't like your own kind killing each other, do you? I don't want to be a part of it. But you know, Shiki, humans kill each other all the time. You know, vampires are demons that suck the blood of humans. If so, the target of killing is humans, not the same vampire. You're gonna kill that. Aren't you supposed to be a human? A blood-sucking target? Blood-sucking and killing are two different things. But still, I understand what Shiki is trying to say. We're the same species. We should help each other, right? But vampires are like endemic species that have evolved differently even though they are derived from the same great source. We don't have much in the way of human camaraderie. So, the vampire you're looking for is different from you. Yes, I'm a different kind of vampire. I'm chasing human vampires, so it's pretty much the same fantasy you guys have. 
They suck the blood of humans and use the people they kill as messengers to gradually increase their power. You remember the dead this morning, right? That's what happens to people who are killed by vampires. The moving dead who have died as humans but are still alive because they cannot die. Dead, but alive. The corpse that appeared in the alleyway. In the story of vampires, pe people whose blood is sucked become new vampires and attack people. So that's how they increase their numbers and finally turn an entire village into a land of death. Yes, that's the kind of vampire that lurks in this city. I'm not a bloodsucker, and I'm not one of them, so there will be no problem in killing each other. Arquaid says matter-of-factly. Apparently, there are many different types of vampires. I'm creeped out by the fact that it's so late. You're the one who told me to shield you from him, aren't you? Yeah, that was the plan all along. He said that even if you don't like it, he will use you as a shield, and even if you run away, he will blind you with his magical eye and scare you so much that he will use you up. I guess she's talking about the vampire she's haunting. But as I was talking to Shiki, I changed my mind. So the assumption was that we would be forced from the beginning. Oh, oh maybe she was talking about Shiki. So... I guess she was saying that she was going to forcibly, you know, if he wasn't going to willingly help uh, help her out, she would force him to. Okay, let's say I never forget that. What do you mean you changed your mind? Well, I was wrong. I... Shiki, until you killed me and restored me, I thought you were from the church. If that's the case, there's a possibility that they know where the enemy is, and we can expect them to be a force to be reckoned with. I'm not sure what to make of it. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of vampires, let alone where the enemy's coffin is. Yeah, there's no way those guys would send an agent to such an atheist country in the first place, and they wouldn't work alone in the first place. The master-apprentice duo was their basic approach. Well... I don't know. I wouldn't be so sure. Arquaid mumbles to herself. I got sidetracked and left this one behind for good. Anyway, my target is back from you to my original prey. Which is kind of a bummer, I guess. What, is she trying to say she'd rather kill us? She said something scary in a bouncy voice. Damn, you still got something on me, that bitch. <laughs> Even though it was natural for her to hate me after what I did, it was not good for my heart to hear her say I want to kill you while smiling. I knew you were going to kill me the moment I let my guard down. Are we done with the serious stuff? Then I'm going to bed. What? And to think... Then, with a bounce in her step, she walked over to the bed and laid down with a slump. I feel good. I'll sleep until the sun goes down. Oh, and Shiki, you should get some rest while you can, okay? Vampires can't be active during the day, so it'll be at night when they'll be on a full-scale watch. You, do you realize that you just said something that negates your entire existence? I'm fine. I think I've reached my limit. Well, good night, Shiki. Wake me up when the sun goes down. Oh, hey! Arkwade fell asleep abruptly, like a car with the engine turned off. Well, that's convenient for us. We can, uh... Maybe we can try to leave. <laughs> maybe we can just run and leave her here. Really? Unbelievable. She's really asleep. I felt like an idiot for standing by the door so I could escape at any time. Are you sure about that? I know it's not for me to say, but is that really what I want? We're in a situation where we've been forced to come here. Now we can escape with ease. No, to begin with. Even though I don't have the same urges anymore. I've killed you once. So how can this woman fall asleep? Yeah, she's kind of defenseless now too. 
and she looks so beautiful. I stare into Arkwade's face. The plump chest is rising and falling, and it seems to be breathing. I lay on the bed, my body not moving a muscle. Sleep like a picture. Gently closed eyelids. She has long eyelashes and pretty lips that look fresh even without red. The swelling of her breasts. The line of her hips is like a hazy hill on the horizon. Her legs are slender and straight. Neat yet sensual, what a contradiction of terms comes to mind. Shiki, you're not about to do something, are you? It's rape time. <laughs> See, if this if this had age scenes, I'd be afraid of what might happen next. <laughs> a woman like that, sleeping unprotected in a royal suite like this. I had only known her for a short time, and she trusted me with all her heart. The person who had brutally killed her. You're an idiot, you know that? Yeah, I think it's ridiculously honest, to the point of being a little alarming. Anyway, this is the base point. This may be the last turning point where Tonoshiki can turn back. You will be my shield, this woman said. Yep, choice time. So much for... so much for drunkenness? <laughs> Let's run away. Uh, so much for getting lost. Let's stay. I... Okay, let's run away is, I guess it's choice one, and choice two is let's stay. Um, you know, I feel like we should create a save file here just to be, uh, just to be safe. Okay, so I think, um, let's stay is option two, right? Because I promised. Yes, I've already promised. Then, no matter what it is, I don't think I should break it. Arquaid is asleep. It doesn't look very likely, but this girl said she was weak. The truth is, I probably don't have time to even think about what I was going to do after this, whether I was going to run away or stay. The air was still and quiet. The only two people on this floor, let alone in this room, are me and this girl. I'll reserve the question of whether it's rude to count. Self-proclaimed vampires as people. What the hell is that? Who are you calling rude, you idiot? Give yourself a break. From this morning's chase to this point, my mind and body seem to be exhausted and not trying to work properly. Anyway, let's just calm down first. I walked away from the door to sit on a chair. This chair, this chair. <laughs> I sat down on the high chair provided in the mini bar. Time to drink. <laughs> I took a bottle of natural water from the refrigerator, poured it into a glass and sipped it. All right. The chilled water helped me clear my mind. My common sense is numb from all the unbelievable events that have happened since this morning, but I'm trying to stay calm, think things over, and figure out what to do. Seriously? It was the second tweet of the day. Whatever the hell that's supposed to mean. Is Shiki on Twitter? <laughs> the previous one was directed at Arcwade, but this time it was an evaluation directed at myself. The sound of the sleeping woman's breathing was in my ears, making it hard to concentrate. You can't be too careful. What is it about that woman that excites me at this point in my life? Well, I can think of uh, a couple things, if you know what I mean. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. <laughs> Let's leave the room for now. Yeah, he did rent the entire floor. He might as well go exploring. I'm sure it's because I haven't gotten over my fear of the alleyway. A deep breath in the hallway would cool this strange fever. We're really renting out the whole floor. There were no other guests on the top floor, let, let alone any employees. 
The room Arkwade is in is a corner room at the end of the hallway. The view is great, but of course the elevator hall is a long way from the room. Oh, by the way, school. Yeah, I completely forgot about that, huh? It was a little past 11 in the morning. It was an unexcused absence. If the school had contacted my house, I would be out. There would be nothing I could do about this. I don't care what Akiha says about me, but I don't have time for that either. It's a long shot, but I'll email Arihiko it. I'm not feeling well today. I'll see if I can follow up. I'll throw a general explanation of the situation in request to my bad friend. It's not something you can force, it's just something you can do if the timing is right. I wish I could tell you more about what happened. Yeah, you'll just have to come up with some kind of lie. No, 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 that's an ambulance case. Or, uh, okay, whatever, whatever he's supposed to, whatever he's trying to say there. I can't argue with someone who says I finally lost my mind. I'm guessing he's saying that if he tells Arihiko the truth, then he's gonna say he's crazy, which he probably would. Which is why I'm saying you should probably just tell him some kind of excuse. Kind of come up with some kind of convenient lie. That's about right, for him. Well... I thought back to the familiar faces and felt calmer. It was time to give up and return to the room where the self-proclaimed vampire slept. I'm pretty sure she's still asleep. Excuse me. I know I won't get a response, but I can't help but say it. A white woman was sleeping on the bed, looking exactly the same as before. There was no sense of danger. If you didn't know what was going on, you'd think she was a princess from some other country. Well, you're not too far off there. I sat back down on the couch, which I had avoided because I was afraid that if I sat down, I wouldn't be able to come back. The sofa was the only place where I could see both the bed and the door at the same time. Sure enough, the comfort of the couch was tremendous. I'm melting, that's what I'm saying, but I'm on guard duty. I have to keep my head up and stay awake. Now, uh, time to make some coffee, or just drink some kind of caffeine just to keep yourself awake. But when I look at it this way, it's still nightmarishly beautiful. The white smooth skin, the fingers that are a work of art in themselves, and the soft lines of the body. The overall image is flawless, and the details are unparalleled. I've never seen such a perfect form before in my life. No, you're right. I thought I'd probably never see it again. <sighs> I looked up at the ceiling in contemplation. I don't care if I killed her and she came back to life, or if she's a vampire. Arquaid was a life that spoke a human language and had a human form. If it's too weak to wake up on its own, and I'm responsible for it. You have to take responsibility for what you've done. The teachings of my childhood show their face in places like this. I remember my teacher saying that. She said that my eyes are weird, so I attract weird things. If you're, you'd better be ready to go. In the meantime, I have to protect her in my own way, at least for tonight, when I promised her. And until then, I'm going to fall asleep. White. A dazzling white. The colors evoke nostalgic memories. A hot summer day. Oh, I know what this is. We haven't seen this flashback yet, surprisingly. I remember in the original game we saw this way earlier. Blue sky and big, big clouds. The slowly wavering landscape and... The sound of cicadas made me feel dizzy. The sound of cicadas. Both hands are covered in a hot sheen, like they've been splattered with paint. Ming, ming, ming. Ming, ming, ming. 
cicada husks in the square. This is some creepy ass music. The sun seems to be right around the corner. The plaza was slowly burning. A hot day in the middle of summer. It's as if the world has become a floating world. Oof. Grunting or groaning sound. Akiha, who had always been quiet and followed me around, was crying. Besides Akiha, there was one other child lying on the ground. My hands are slick with the sun's rays. Oh, these hands are so tight. The claw of a fallen child. It's red from the blood I spilled. Warm. Shiki? The adults are coming. The fallen child remains dead. The adults are screaming. He's asking if you're the one who killed him. Wow. I was wondering how they were going to do that scene. It's, uh... It's, that's pretty fucking creepy. The music and just uh, the way everything is presented, it's just uh, it's so much better. I had such a dream, which I forgot even in my dream. Shiki, come on, wake up. The sun is already set. My body was shaking violently. A not-so-familiar voice and the touch of a cold hand on my shoulder. Arcwade is in front of me. It was pitch black outside the window. I looked at my watch and saw that it was around 8 o'clock in the evening. Huh? It's not that. I told you to wake me up when the sun goes down, but you're still asleep. My bad. I was asleep, wasn't I? It's pathetic that I fell asleep while watching Arkwade sleep. Oh god, that's not good enough for an escort. I can't believe we were both asleep. If you had been attacked, we would both be dead, wouldn't we? I told you that it was my bad. But see, you're the one who said it was safe during the day. You can never be sure, because sometimes a demon will come for you, like this morning. Arkwade is angry. Of course, it's totally my fault. If the guards were sleeping together, they were no better than scarecrows. And besides, I'm a vampire too, Shiki. So how can you fall asleep without feeling threatened? Shouldn't I be a little nervous, or in awe, or reacting like that? Totally bad was an overstatement. This woman was more upset that I wasn't on guard duty than that she was just plain asleep. When I woke up, I found Shiki sleeping happily. Well, he was kind of having a nightmare, so I don't know if you'd say he was sleeping happily. You're so defenseless, I was seriously worried that you might not have the dignity of a vampire. What, you're just as vulnerable as I am. I've killed you once before, and I'm not sure I won't do it again, but you're sleeping like a princess. Don't underestimate me just because I'm a human. You can bite a cat in the head, I retorted. Okay. I, I really don't think that was what he was trying to say. It was almost an agonizing excuse. Oh. Arkwade's eyes were black and white as if she had just realized something. That's what I thought. I don't know why. Somehow, while I was talking to Shiki in the back alley, I seemed to trust him completely. Well, I don't feel bad about it. I see. If you trust me that much, I'll make the effort. Now all I have to do is keep an eye on you the whole time? Yes, for now. Until the sun comes up. I won't leave the room, so Shiki, if anyone comes to this floor, be on the lookout. Ugh. They say to be cautious, but when a Black Panther comes along like this morning, there's no way to be cautious. 
I know it's too much for me to handle, but I can't even keep a watchful eye if I only know what I'm doing. Let's resume the information gathering that we've interrupted. We'll have to deal with the Black Panther and the Burning Corpse, but I don't know enough about this guy or his enemies yet. I'll check it out, Arquaid. The ones who attacked you in the alleyway, were they sent by your enemies? It's more like a patrol. I think it was their role to monitor the city along a certain route. It's a good idea to know what you're looking for. You've been exposed by your enemies? I'm sorry. If I were in perfect physical condition, I could have saved myself a lot of trouble, but I'm not. That's why I ran in here with Shiki. If they attacked me before I regained my strength, there was nothing I could do. Arcoid's enemy is another vampire, a serial killer who is causing a stir in the city. From the way she just said it, vampires are looking for a place in each other's lives. However, the positions are not the same. Arcoid is now fatally weakened. And the enemy has men to serve as your hands and feet, and you have no one. I guess, basically, the enemy has servants, and she doesn't have any servants. Arcoid raises an eyebrow in disgust. If you don't argue, are you really alone? Well, that would be great. Hey, you said earlier that each vampire is an individual. Isn't that what this is about? So, what kind of guy is a vampire with lots of friends? It's... Uh, how can I explain this in simple terms? Arcoid swims her gaze. Hmm. Apparently, she wasn't used to talking much. It's okay. It's been difficult. Whatever you can talk about, just talk about it. I don't know what's going on earlier, but I'll figure it out. Yeah? Thanks, Shiki. Yeah, yeah. Don't thank me. Just keep going. Yes, Arquaid nodded, honestly. I've got lots of friends, and there's a pattern to it, but the dead that lurk in this city are the older type of vampires. Oh god, are we really pulling out a fucking whiteboard? <laughs> or, as the church calls it, Lord of the Castle Vampires. These lords will invade villages and towns in stages. First move, Progression 1. We will find people who are superior in their abilities and make them our servants by sucking their blood. When a vampire sucks a person's blood, the person dies and becomes a puppet like the lord of the castle, but still retains the personality they had when they were human. In other words, it's a corpse with a personality. In their ranks of the dead, it's an immortal level, high level messenger. Okay, I don't know where she's going with this, but I slept too, and my head is clear. I'm going to skip over the words I don't understand and just pursue the parts I do understand. Corpse with personality left over, or you're saying that I'll become a vampire while still human. I don't know if I'd call myself a vampire on the third rung. This kind of reminds me of that thing, the, the all about ploy ske uh, skit from Witch on the Holy Night. Think of it as a command post for worker ants that have become more than human, but still can't make babies. So those guys from the alleyway are... There's another rung down, the second rung, corpse. They can't even mimic humans. They're just laborers who do what they're told. Perhaps in a fit of excitement, Arquaid began to illustrate the stages of the vampires. She's casually multi-talented, this girl. Once he has a certain number of people in the city as his servants, the lord of the castle prepares a coffin and goes to sleep. We can't be active during the day, and more importantly, the, va the vampires who are the owners of the castle stand out just by being active. Leave the stockpiling of food and an expansion of power to the servants. 
In this way, the serpents above the third rung mimic humans and gradually prey on other humans. Human flesh and blood is a source of activity for the servants, but most of it goes to the lord of the castle. The lord of the castle sleeps in a coffin, accumulates power, and, and finally turns the entire community into his own flesh and blood. This is the nature of the things that lurk in this city. So basically, the uh, the lord of the castle, quote unquote, is sleeping, and everybody else is everyone else is doing his bidding until the entire city be turns into uh, armies of the dead and vampires. But as the number of victims increases, the the power of the lord of the castle will increase. I hope I can find the coffin and kill it before then, but I haven't even found the enemy's bed yet. This time, they're hiding so cleverly, I can't even feel their presence. It's easy to clean up once you find a place to sleep, though. This time, I had no clue what to do, so I had no choice but to walk around the city in the daytime to investigate. My question is where the hell did you get the whiteboard from? <laughs> While I was doing that, I was attacked by a serial killer passing by, so I was in trouble. Arquay claps her hands together and laughs at me. <laughs> oh god. Do I really look like that? It was probably just a jab at a passing murderer. It was very uncomfortable. I see. I can see the story for now. The city is home to a monster that preys on humans, and Arquaid has come to exterminate it. But when I was trying to locate him, I, you know, I got him, and now he's weak, so he's hiding until he recovers. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I guess that's the short version. Next, why does this enemy of yours make such a roundabout way of doing things? Why don't you just do it all by yourself without having servants? It's simply because you're weak. No matter how much supernatural power and scale of existence a vampire has, they cannot live alone. With their many weaknesses, they never stay on the stage for long. That's why they use people who are vulnerable but have few weaknesses to gather blood from a safe distance. In other words, risk aversion. So many weaknesses. Hey, well, what exactly are they? Sunlight, magic depletion mostly, but the biggest weakness, yeah. I guess that means I have a lot of enemies. You have many enemies? Is that like you? I'm the exception, actually. Vampires, you see, are hated by humans. Humans' greatest weapon is numbers and sharing, right? There are people in the world who come running when vampires cause trouble, who only want to kill vampires. One of the most insidious and vindictive is the heresy hunting in the church, and other religions, especially in the West. They are called agents because they are supposed to do the will of the Lord with human hands. They are humans who have been honing their skills at killing the dead for hundreds of years. They're more trouble than a bad vampire. That's why vampires have to hide for a while. If you have to deal with them all the time, you won't be able to gather enough blood. And more importantly, you'll risk being sealed up. The Church's Inquisition. Is it like the witch hunts and inquisition of the Middle Ages? He must be a specialist in anti-vampires, because that's where the vampires hide. But... Once you hide, I mean, once you've collected enough blood, you don't need to hide? That's right, once you have the power, you don't need to hide. The church's agents would come and go. The vampires will use the wealth they have accumulated in the city to commit tyranny. That way, after they've completely devoured the city, they'll move on to find a new hunting ground. If you want to get rid of vampires, you have to realize it before it happens. I'm sorry, Shiki, but with so many servants already roaming around, this city is in a situation that cannot be recovered by you humans. Arcoid's explanation went through my head. I understand what she's saying. However, understanding and tolerance are two different things. I don't know if I can admit that our city's already too far gone. Besides, to begin with. Yeah, I still can't believe it myself. Mm, what are you trying to say, Shiki? No, I don't. 
I know Arcoid is telling the truth. You can't lie, can you? It's not obvious. There's no need for it. So, it's not that I don't trust you. It's that I don't understand vampires. I casually say vampire, but it still doesn't ring a bell. You're not human, that's for sure. I know that much. But that doesn't mean I can't feel it when people say vampire. That's what I thought. The vampire image that Chiki knows and the vampire image that I know are very different. Oh, that's what I meant. I had never imagined that vampires were like this, let alone that they really existed. I don't even know what the difference is between you and them. I can't even tell the difference between you and them. That's right. If you don't know the difference, don't talk to this girl anymore. Don't trust them without a reason. Because there is a possibility that this creature is even more dangerous than the vampire who is the owner of the castle. I see. From a human point of view, that's true. If they are both unknown, then they both look equally dangerous. Okay, so now we have an extra lesson. Let me tell you about vampires, the basics. All Arquid is holding up a finger with pride. That's nice, but you know what? What's the basic version? You're a novice, so you need to start with something that even a kitten knows about vampires. That's why this is the basic version. Don't worry, I'll teach you as a senior. Who is the senior? I mean, you've already started with the basics, this girl. Uh, okay, let's just keep this short. This is Nasu you're talking about. You're not going to get anything short. You're going to get the long, long exposition. <laughs> I'll take care of it. I'll try as hard as I can. It was an answer I didn't quite trust. She said something like that earlier, but Arcoid was not used to conversations. Well, since you call yourself a vampire, maybe you've never had a chance to talk to a human before. I looked at my watch and saw that it was just before midnight. I was surprised that it had already been that long, but fortunately, I had plenty of time. Here we fucking go. The first thing to do is classify them. Generally speaking, there are two main types of vampires. Some were vampires from the start, and some became vampires afterwards. The former are called true ancestors, and the latter are called the dead. Well, technically I remember they're called dead apostles. The dead are zombies, aren't they? You call them vampires, but they are the dead. The latter I mentioned earlier is also the ecology of the dead. They suck human blood, make servants of them, are vulnerable to sunlight, and are defeated before the baptismal ritual. Our enemies are also vampires, distinguished from the dead. Before you know it, it's gone from my enemy to our enemy. I'd like to point this out, but it's not a mistake at this point, so let's let it pass. Hmm, so you said the dead weren't vampires from the start. What does that mean? The dead are humans, animals, and anything that wasn't originally a vampire. Some are immortalized at the end of their magic, while others have their blood sucked and become servants. Well, in both cases, the result is the same. Those that become vampires gain an imperfect but immortal body, and are removed from the human category. Oh my god. Why are they both illustrated as bunny rabbits? I don't know how to feel about this. It's like, Arquaid, are you taking this seriously? The one that was a vampire all along, the true ancestor. And the humans turned vampires, the dead. I wonder if it's... I feel like there is a discrepancy or a structural contradiction in this story. Hey Shiki, how much do you know about the characteristics of vampires? I only have a conventional image. Which sucks the blood of virgins, or turns them into gold bucks, mists, or wolves just by staring at them, is the image of vampires that we generally hear about. 
Yeah, I think you're about right. Oh my god. These fucking illustrations. <laughs> they suck the blood of virgins because the blood, which has not yet been exchanged with other humans, is, is better suited to replenish their genes. It's more nutritious than regular blood. That's the difference. The mortals, those who are acquired vampires, are imperfectly immortal. It is true that they have been transformed into a life form with dynamic cells that are immortal and resistant to death. But it's like a fire that burns, and if you don't constantly replenish its energy, it will go out. Any living thing needs to be nourished to function, right? It's the same. The only difference is that vampires don't have a lifespan as long as they continue to take in food and blood. Vampires who have become vampires, like the dead, suck blood because they need to survive. I was originally human, so it's impossible for me to have an immortal body. The longer they live, the more power they gain, the less the genes that make up their bodies can withstand the growth of atoms. If they don't continue to increase their strength, they will collapse. But if they increase their strength too much, they will not be able to maintain their own shape, their own order. What do we do to make up for it? It's easy. All you have to do is take in the normal order from others, not the abnormal order like yours, and supplement the order that is being lost. It's like how we prefer organic compounds in our diet. The vampire gathers its normal genetic information and heat content from the blood, the heat content of their souls, if you will. It's like sucking human blood and taking in the genetic information to fix its own body. For the mortals, blood sucking is an essential act of existence, as well as a way to eat and save power. Oh boy. I wonder if we if we ever get a Fate Stay Night remake, we'll have Saver like pulling out a whiteboard and just illustrating how servants work. It's complicated and it's long. Yeah. No wonder. <laughs> I'm not surprised. I hadn't even caught up with my understanding yet, but, but Arkway didn't mind and continued talking. The next thing you know, I'm going to put you in a bind just by staring at you. It's a kind of magic eye. The eyeball is a useful and powerful magical circuit, so there are many vampires with magical eyes. I think directional magic release function would be easier to understand. It's called a beam for your eyes, that's what it looks like. Wait, you're emitting a beam? The appearance of so many crazy words made me lean back. Yeah? Well... I don't think so. I don't think there are any vampires that make that much sense. It's just an image. I'm talking about an image. It's like a... like a magic beam from an anime. I see. That was both good and disappointing. Did Shiki actually want her to emit beams from her eyes? I mean, what the hell is a magic eye? It's a special kind of eye that uses magic circuits to release magic in a single process. Well, it's kind of like technology. It's actually not really like technology at all, though. <laughs> you know, we have sword fighting, right? It's the same thing. Sword fight? What? No, it's not. <laughs> what are you talking about? I know what mystic eyes are. It's not like f sword fighting. There are various types of techniques, but they can be used by anyone who is mortal. However, even if you train it, the power depends on the individual differences and talents of the practitioner. I'm not sure what you mean by that. This is the basic and most powerful. In the way of being a vampire, other magical eyes are not very meaningful. The enchanted eye doesn't enchant the one who sees it. It enchants the one who looks into the vampire's eyes. A powerful vampire will use their magical eye to tap into the brain of an opponent and take complete control of their thoughts. Well, it's rare for a mortal to retain that level of magical eye. Hmm. It's like brainwashing, hypnosis, or something like that. For example, forget what you've seen here. If you have such an eye, you can cover up the murder even if a third party witnesses it. 
Logic aside, the point is that it's bad to look into the eyes? Yes, well done. And that's why when you're facing a vampire, you're, you're supposed to look down at the whole thing, not just the face. It's suicide to make eye contact with someone. Even though that's probably what we've been doing with her this whole time. The next one will be fog, right? Oh my god, how many of these are there? I wonder if this can also be classified into two types. The higher ones are the ones that are truly particulate. It's a remote technique that diffuses itself to become a phenomenon. There must be only a few mortals who can do this over a wide area for a long time. And the lowly one is blind. Is it easier to understand? Cautious vampires create an alter ego and put their consciousness on it to operate. When they're done, they cut off the magic that controls the altar, and it turns to dust and fizzles out, making it look like it just fizzled out. I'm not familiar with this one. Is she talking about vampires taking control of familiars or something? Mm-hmm. Kagemusha? I think you mean Kagemusha. She's not a foreigner. She's a foreign vampire who knows a lot about Japanese culture. Turning into a wolf or any other animal is a byproduct of using a wizard to replace a damaged body. That just looks silly. <laughs> the more years a vampire has lived, the less time it has to supplement its decaying body with normal life. So they take a powerful beast and use it as their body. When necessary, the beast is returned to its original state for use, so it appears to have turned into a wolf or turned out a wolf. So it can turn into a it, it can turn into a wolf and then turn into a wolf again. What the <laughs> what? <laughs> the dead have taken at least one of the old beasts into their bodies to repair their lives. If they take in too many, the vampire's ego will become clouded with the beast. So basically the vampire will start to think it's the beast. Uh he's gone too. Well, here's the thing. Based on the image that Shiki gave me, I gave you a quick overview, but I hope you understand what vampires are like. Yeah, that was a, that was a very short and uh, to-the-point um, lecture from Arcoid. In any case, a vampire is a bloodsucker that looks like a human and has the same intellectual structure as a human. No matter how far in its contents are, as long as its basic form is human, it's fine as a vampire. In fact, I'm getting more and more confused. Yeah, I don't blame him. <laughs> I know how monstrous vampires are, but that's why I can't believe that the woman in front of me is a vampire. Well, you just haven't seen her other side yet. Well, it's my turn now. To tell you the truth, I forgot to ask you something important, too. What the hell? There's nothing you need to ask me now. I'm not a vampire or anything. I'm just a student. Hmm. I'm going to ask you something then, Shiki. How did you kill me? Oh, uh, getting straight to the point, huh? What? That's why I'm asking you what methods you used. The only mysteries that I haven't experienced yet are the ancient Shintoism of this country and the hidden treasures of South America. No, you can't keep me dead that long. Answer me, Shiki. What vintage mysteries did you make me reanimate with? No, the mysteries of the ages. What are you talking about? Ar I know Arcway is serious. But I had no idea what she was trying to say. So it's about conceptual armament. A catalyst for storing history and ideas. There are divine artifacts in this country too, right? I'm sure you've heard of it, but I've never heard of it. I told you, I'm just a student. I don't know anything about it. 
That's a lie. A person who is not a sorcerer cannot hurt me. Shiki, there's something you're keeping from me, isn't there? Arcoid glared at me like an angry cat. Like she was a, a Neko Arcoid or something. But even with that look in your eyes, I have nothing to hide. There was... I'm sorry, but I think there was one, actually. But I wonder if it's relevant here. Arcoid is still staring. This is a trend that won't stop until I confide in you. I don't know what to say. I can see the lines where things break. Cut line? I guess. People don't usually believe stories like this. In fact, it's been that way all this time. What does that mean? But Arcoid asked back seriously. That's why I can see the line where things are cut. It's like a crack, and if you run a blade through it, you can easily cut it. Does that make sense? It's convenient to be able to cut steel with a knife, but it doesn't mean you can cut anywhere you want. You can only cut where you can see the line, so you can't even use it for carpentry. Even when I cut you, you know, a knife can cut a woman's skin, right? I don't like that look she's giving us. A chill runs down my spine. She looked at me with such a strong gaze that I had to stop breathing. I wonder if she was using her mystic eyes on us. Yes, I thought the evil eye of direct death was only in fairy tales, but I guess it exists everywhere. A mutant monster like you. I don't deserve to be called a monster by a vampire. I don't need a vampire to tell me I'm a monster. A monster is a monster, isn't it? No one, not even us, possesses the magical eye that can see the death of things. Seeing things die? What else is there to say? Shiki, your eyes must have a line open to a place where you shouldn't be connected as a living being. Are those eyes something you were born with? No, it's been this way for a long time, but it's not something I was born with. Then you've tried dying at least once before, haven't you? You're a vampire. You can't die that easily. But, well, you know, I almost died in an accident once. It wasn't until afterwards that I started seeing lines. Hmm. I'm sure you had potential, but I think that's what triggered it. The demon eye of direct death, huh? Or the mystic eyes of death perception. I'm pretty sure you can kill me with that. Arcoid sniffed unhappily and turned her gaze away from me. Hm. I was thankful that I no longer had that look in my eyes, although it was directed at me with obvious disgust. Arcoid, you know what this line is? Not as much as you can actually perceive, but I can explain it to you as knowledge. What you are looking at is the result of all things, the point at which things die. To put it more simply, it is the death of all beings. It is. It was slightly different, but it was close to what the teacher who gave me these glasses had taught me as a child. Consequences of all things, the future of things. I've never been aware of it. I've tried not to be aware of it. What are you talking about? The line I'm looking at is just a cut there. So that line is death. Okay, Shiki, all things have an end. When that will be depends on each individual. But anyway, there is an end. Death is not something that comes. It is something that is contained within us at the moment of birth and will manifest itself one day. It is cause and effect. You've heard of the law of cause and effect, haven't you? If it's here, it must be gone. The order will not tolerate a single exception, even the smallest mistake. Because if there was such a thing, the whole premise of this universe would collapse. It would just disappear like a bubble. No, even if it is. Isn't space, or indeed, misplaced? No, not really sure what he was getting at there. You're looking at it all wrong. Your eyes are the worst eyes in the world. Wow. Well, thanks, I guess. Ready? An annihilation is a pre-designed rule for all things. 
Any lifespan, no matter how long or how mighty has this, even if there is life out there with a lifespan longer than the lifespan of the universe, it doesn't mean it will live indefinitely. The predetermined extinction is the death of the thing. And since it's been there from the beginning, it's not impossible to see it with your eyes if you have the ability to understand the concept of mortality, and if you have a brain and eyeballs with the right connections. That is what the line you were looking at is. It, if I had to theorize it in your way, I would say that it is a fatal flaw in the atomic bond. Or maybe it's a self-destruct switch in the genes that expresses the cause of the individual death. Anyway, what you're looking at is the line where things die, the conclusion of death itself. I don't know how you've been able to live all this time in such a state. You must have a very peaceful mind, Shiki. Yeah, I don't think just having a peaceful mind is enough to live with something like that. Arkwade speaks plainly. You don't even know what people are thinking. You're kidding. I understand her explanation, but I don't want to agree with any of it. There's no way it could be, much less see it. You can't see it. Normally, if you cut off a creature's head, it's killed. This one was cut off, which means it stopped. Conversely, creatures whose heads cannot be severed will not be killed. Oh, it's me, so make an exception. You can ignore that rule. Even if you are dealing with something that nullifies all external factors, you kill it first. The killed opponent will then become dead, I guess. So basically, if Shiki cuts the lines, as we know in the original game, if, as we know in the original game, if Shiki cuts the lines of death, um, it, it will kill anything mortal or immortal, basically, because I think it, in the original explain, it explains that if he, uh, or if he stabs the point of death, not only just cuts the lines, then he'll permanently kill even something that could be immortal. So... I, I guess he would just kill its existence or kill its soul so it couldn't, you know, it couldn't ever come back. It's not that I would, it's not that you were able to kill me because of the amputation. In your case, you murdered a thing, and the object is severed as a result. Look, if this isn't a monster, what is it? You say it's just a line that can cut things, but those two eyes are more unique than any other mutation that has ever been created. Listen, Shiki, you have eyes like the Grim Reaper that kills everything. That's right. So I've been trying not to be aware of it, not to acknowledge it. The truth is, I've known for a long time. Arkwade was right that this eye, this life, was nothing but a mistake to the world. Because ever since that day, I've been shown the world ending. Everything was informed of the possibility that it could collapse in a second. As long as I'm alive, I'll be around. Even like that, it was filled with signs of death. So, what is it? I'll be able to kill you too. I'll kill anything. I'm a dangerous guy. Really? Then let's give it a try. Are you serious? Maybe she just wants us to cut an object or something. Arquade turns off the lights in the room and moves to the window. The curtains are opened. A lot of light, a lot of information that had been blocked out, came into view. The moonlight through the window creates a shadow of a white woman. Come on, just be serious. Oh, are you trying to make me invisible with those glasses? You're sure? It's impossible. I put my hand on my glasses, which I had never taken off in public before. I guess I was getting desperate after Arkway's accusations. A violent feeling pushes me to take off my glasses. Lines start to stir around the room. 
vision, my vision is filled with the consequences of death. Uh, what? It was such a miracle that I could hardly believe my eyes. A white moon outside the window. In the daytime, the lines are difficult to see because of the strong sunlight. In the faint light of the moon, it even glowed and was visible. In it. The lines on Arcoid's body were so thin and uncertain that I had to focus my attention to see them. Oh no. Why? What do you think? You can barely see the lines, can you? I'm a creature of the night that doesn't have a time of death. So it would be impossible to kill it, even with your eyes. Hmm, I wonder if I can still see a little bit. I'm not deadly at night, but I am somewhat mortal in the daytime. That weakness was exploited and I was killed by you. It was after a big day of work, and my resistance to instant death was low. As a result, you killed me, and as you can see, I have become so weak that I can die even at night. In other words, I'm no longer immortal, but Shiki, can you cut the line in my body? I wonder about that. Is it, it's true that there is a line, so I think it can be cut. But I don't think I can do it as well as I did then, in less than a second. It, I think it's hard to do. I can't do it unless you're asleep, because you can't see the lines. Right? That's your biggest flaw. No matter how much death is in sight, it must be Shiki's own skill that draws the line. No matter how weak I am, my motor skills are not so weak that Shiki can catch me. I see. If you ask me, I can't keep up with or catch a fast-moving animal. As long as you can't catch it, you can't touch the line. In other words, you can't kill a moving object even if you can see such a line. The non-human thing laughed and said that my fears were only alleviated by such words. Yes, it's a funny story. It's a light-hearted joke. No matter what metaphor, no matter what flaw I'm taught, it doesn't change the way I've always seen the world. I'm a broken part of the world that shouldn't be mixed up. Yeah, but still. It's so obvious that it doesn't matter. I'm seeing things that are impossible. I really love the, uh, the new version of this track, by the way. It, it really, um... It, it's probably my favorite version of it now. <laughs> a large flower playing in the moonlight. That's right, I didn't want an eternity. It's just that there's something that even I can touch. I just want to stay alive and have hope. <clears throat> Ouch. I felt a headache coming on. Looking at the lines gives me a headache. I put on my glasses and switch from the miraculous sight to my original vision. Arquaid is looking at me suspiciously. Is... is there anything more? No, not really. Can't you see the lines if you wear those glasses? Well, yeah. It was given to me by someone I met a long time ago when my eye was like this. Now I only use the lens, but thanks to it, I've, I've managed to live a normal life. I know, I know. No matter how strong your mind is, if you face death all the time, you'll either go insane or have your eyeballs crushed. You know what? You've been saying all the right things and making all the noise you can. You need to cut the crap a bit. Also, it's close. Stop. Just stop right there. I'll throw a vase at you if you don't stop. <laughs> okay, what was that about? I sense danger and back away. However, there was no way my threats would work on this big cat. An Arquaid approached me, curious. 
it? Yeah, let me see that. No, I'm not giving this to you. It's too important. I'm not going to break it. Hey, hey, I'm really just going to watch, okay? What a stupid statement. Uh, oh god. Are we really going to <laughs> give, uh, we really have a choice here? I was so dumbfounded that I just handed, to, had, that I just handed it to her. Uh, uh, no, I'm not going to take that hand. I feel like we should choose the first one. Yeah, I think the first one's the best option. Arcoid's not going to give up. Or rather, if she got any closer, it would definitely turn into a scuffle. In that case, I would definitely be the one who would be pushed down. Yeah, she is stronger than you. Oh god, I get it. Look. Okay, I want it back as soon as you see it. I handed the glasses to Arcoid. Arcoid checks the glasses closely. And... Shiki is the person who gave you this in the city. I don't think so. It was seven years ago, and she wasn't the kind of person to stay in one place. Yeah, I'm glad I don't have to deal with more people. It's probably safer to back off against Blue, though. Arcoid falls silent with a serious look on her face. Wait, does Arcoid actually know Alco? Arcoid, do you know who made those glasses? I know. She's one of the four wizards alive. Oh. Maybe a lot of people know who they are. That pair of glasses is an extraordinary piece of equipment. I can't even break them with my current strength. Arcoid looks more and more serious. You were going to destroy it? What? Did I say something like that? I knew you were going to destroy it. Give them back, I said, taking the glasses back from Arcoid. Damn it, you're the one who said I'd be insane without these glasses. Or were you trying to tell me to be, you know? I didn't mean anything by it. I, somehow, I didn't like the way Shiki looked so important. Looked important. <laughs> I have no idea what vampires think. You're somehow destroying my lifeline, this woman. Well, if she did destroy those glasses, she probably would have, uh, ruined your life and, uh, inadvertently killed you. Just don't get any weird ideas again. The memories of my teacher are important, but more than that, I can't go without this. If I had to see the line all the time, I'd have a headache. Well, more than that, you'd probably go crazy. Hmm, I wonder if seeing death puts a strain on the brain. Yeah, Shiki's eyes could be caused by anything, but I think that's about it for now. I'll tell you more about it when I get a chance. No, thank you. Unfortunately, I don't like long conversations. Well, I'll get used to it. Nasu does. Yeah? I like to talk with people. Even if it's a crippled language that doesn't convey half of my intentions, it still moves me so much. Arcoid smiled wryly. That's really what it's all about, as if it's just fun to talk about. You know, it's surprising that the attack on the, uh, the hotel hasn't happened yet. Maybe it's about to happen. Because I remember the original, it happened pretty quick. Here, there's just a lot of dialogue between Shiki and Arcoid before that happens, which I'm, I'm guessing it still will. The night is drawing to a close. Arcoid sat down on the bed. I sat down on the couch, absent-mindedly looking at the clock. The time was a little after four in the morning. It was only an hour before dawn. One hour, huh? There had been no abnormalities so far, and Arcoid herself didn't even seem to be nervous. The hotel was completely peaceful. I was reasonably nervous, but that seemed to end up being an oversight. Somehow, though, I have a feeling that this will pass tonight. Oh god, you jinxed it. Hey, Shiki. 
and for the umpteenth time, Arquaid called out to me. What? I don't have anything to say to you anymore, so... Is that so? It's a waste of time to do this. You know what? You know how much chatter I've been keeping up with? Six hours. Six hours! That's more tiring than just being on guard duty. Arquaid glared at me in frustration. Hmm. Yeah. For some reason, Arquaid kept talking to me. If you're weak, you should sleep. Because it's more fun to talk. And probably because she just stays up at night. <laughs> what a surprise. We ended up facing each other like this. Uh, I really don't know what this girl is thinking. In addition, I was getting hungry. Come to think of it, I haven't eaten anything for a whole day since yesterday's breakfast. If you're hungry, why don't you get something to eat? You know what I'm kind of surprised about too is like, Shiki's been missing for pretty much a whole day at this point, And the mansion's, you know, everybody at the mansion's probably looking for him. Like, why isn't his phone just blowing up? Like, doesn't he have a cell phone in this? His cell phone would just be blowing up with texts and calls. It's like, where are you? Since we're staying in a hotel, why don't we just use room service? Yeah. No, it'll take the edge off. You're the one who needs to eat something. You're too weak to sleep. You should at least eat. If it's okay with you, then it's okay with me. A normal meal has no meaning, but eating alone can be boring. A normal meal is a meal that is neither normal nor special. Oh, right. It doesn't look like much, but Arquaid is apparently a vampire. If, in that case, sucking human blood would be a meal for this girl, too. Vampires need human blood to live, Arquaid said. Then, whose blood has this girl been sucking and how many people has she killed? Oh god, is he really gonna ask her that? He glanced at Arquaid's face. You're out of your mind. It's been explained to me over and over that she's a vampire, but for some reason I can't imagine her sucking human blood. What? Is there something on my face? I panicked and looked away. Arquaid stared at my face, and then... She let out a meaningful laugh. <laughs> Are you curious? Uh, about what? Are you wondering how many humans I've sucked blood from? Ugh. She completely sees through my thoughts. Arcoid's smile was full of generosity, something I didn't like anyway. I don't like it, but more than that, I can't help but wonder how many people this girl has killed in her life. I was working with you. I'm working with you. If I didn't know that, I wouldn't be able to predict when you change your mind and attack me. That's a real problem. I see, Arquaid agreed. Then we have a problem. How many people's blood have I sucked in my life? With a thump, Arquaid bounced lightly off the bed and walked over to the window. How many people? That's... Arquaid smirked and looked at me with amusement as I fell silent. It was an obvious provocation. I'll give you a quick answer. Uh... One, ten, two hundred, three hundred, a thousand? Um... Uh, maybe... I don't know, this is all just a guess. Okay, so two would be... A hundred, three is a thousand, so... Let's go with the least offensive option. <laughs> Maybe she hasn't killed that many people. Or, or not killed, but sucked the blood of that many people. Ten people? Or less? Yes, it's not funny at all. Hmm, hundreds then. Sorry, I'm just an opportunistic jerk. Gosh, so it's in the thousands? Yes, that's a big no, too. Arquaid giggled and laughed in a funny way. <laughs> 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 
Why is it that I'm not angry at all, but, but I'm extremely frustrated? Well, but I don't think so. That's not true either. I'm not sure what you mean by that. It's not like you have any boundaries. Aren't they? I thought vampires were unsuspecting. Even humans get angry just by being alive. If you suck blood to live, there's no limit to what you can do, right? Yes, it is. That's true. I don't think I've ever sucked my own blood in 800 years. I've never killed an ordinary person, not even once. I could at least understand why that was a strange thing for a vampire to say. But it's more than that. Is that true? It's true. I'm afraid of sucking blood. So she sucked no one's blood, so, so none of those answers were right anyway. You're afraid of sucking blood, even though you're a vampire? I'm a coward, I'm sure. That's why I'll always be half-human, even as a vampire. Arquade blurted out as she looked up at the night sky from the window. The white woman remained looking up at the sky for a long time. The back of her face was dim and hazy, like a phantom. I see. Half a vampire, huh? I muttered and patted my chest. Hmm. I'm sincerely relieved. What the hell is that? That's crazy. What's wrong, Shiki? It, no, it's nothing. I'm just laughing at you because you're a cowardly chicken. Chicken? Why am I a chicken? Arcoid nods her head. Huh. Her appearance was very unlike that of a vampire. That's right. Now that's a natural reaction. Because it turned out that the girl in front of me was not so evil, how can I not be relieved? At any rate, if Arquade's word is to be believed, I won't be killed without a fight. It's safe, but I was more relieved about something different than its importance. Totally. Totally out of my mind. I can't believe I had such a misguided impression that I'm more than happy that Arquade is half-human. Huh? The conversation with Arquade had loosened me up, and I felt a dizzying headache coming on. Oof. Seems like we're about to pass out. My vision blurred. Not the usual chronic anemia. My consciousness remained strong. Oh no. Is, he, is the vampire here? I just have a faint headache and a strange chill. What's the matter, Shiki? You've got so much sweat on your forehead. Huh? I wiped my forehead with my hand and realized that Arquade was right. I was sweating so much that my hands were wet. It's crazy. It's not like I'm sweating in a sauna. As if rushed by the anxiety in my heart, I looked at the digital clock provided. The notation is 4.32 a.m. The temperature has dropped to 11 degrees Celsius with the morning chill. The sweating was strange at that temperature. But no, in the first place, this room seems to be as hot as midsummer. Arquid, aren't you hot? What? I don't think the temperature is high enough to cause any abnormal activity. It's only 38 degrees Celsius. And even though I'm weak, I can handle temperature up to 3,000 degrees Celsius. Jesus. If it was stupid of me to ask this girl. What the hell's 3,000 degrees Celsius if it can't even burn a vampire? No, that complaint can wait for now. The temperature display on the watch has not changed from 11 degrees Celsius. Is the machine going crazy, or is the temperature I'm experiencing wrong? I looked around the room for any other thermometers. What the hell is that? I was glued to the monitor installed in my room, which was showing the hotel lobby. Oh shit. It's on fire? I can't believe my eyes. It was a sight that I had only seen in the movies. The flames spread as if water had been splashed on them. 
It's like a human body staggering around in a cloud of black smoke. A large carnivore that devours things like it. Arcoid. Arcoid. Arcoid didn't say anything. That's hostility, or contempt, I guess. She looks at the monitor with a different emotion than I do. In less than a minute, the lobby was submerged in a sea of flames. The fire alarm will not go off. There is no change in the thermometer. I couldn't stop sweating and my, and my throat was parched from just breathing. I don't have to think about it anymore. The enemy, the burning corpse of daylight, that thing has come to this hotel. Shit! I run over to the window to see what's going on outside. There is no change in the cityscape. Even though there were so many flames rising, no one outside noticed this anomaly. There was no sign of anyone coming into the hotel, and no sign of anyone running out. Hmm. Maybe they're like, not real flames, or they're at least flames that are invisible to the human eye. Maybe that's why they can't see them. What's going on, Arquaid? Arquaid stubbornly kept her mouth shut. Time just flew by. My body temperature was rising slowly, as if it was burning my skin. I can't see what's going on outside in the hallway. I don't even know what's going on downstairs. The only thing that comes to mind is a vague feeling that it's too late. Arcoid is silent. Was it from anxiety or frustration? She was holding herself, still, holding something back. She said that she would not leave this room. She said that it was because she didn't have much power right now. Then, uh, I guess you're the only you're the one that has to go out. Then, Shiki. Oh God, leave the room and go explore the outside. Stay in the room to see what's going on outside. Um. Oh, I feel like because in the original game we had to go outside, so that's probably the right choice. Yes. Good. I take a small deep breath and shake off my hesitation. I looked for something that could be used as a weapon, but there was nothing in the room that I could use. I swallowed my hesitation, took the knife from my bag, and walked to the door of the room. Shiki? I'm going to go check it out. Don't leave the room until I get back. I shook off Arcoid's gaze, which seemed to want to say something, and went out into the hallway. Oh boy, this is about to be bad. The lights in the hallway were off, as if there was something wrong with the electrical system. At the end of the corridor, only the elevator hall was alive with lights. My throat hurt more than it had in the room. The air around me was rough and hot, like sandpaper. The hallway was terribly quiet. There's no noise. There was no sign of anyone. You're on the run. Not even one-fourth burnt out. Whatever that's supposed to mean. I'm only one-fourth burnt out. It was a tense, silent space that made me want to believe that the scene I saw on the monitor was a lie. There's nothing unusual about it, is there? I mean, I would say there's definitely something unusual about somebody standing around a bunch of flames with a, what looks like a dog next to him. I walked down the hallway. The sweat on my forehead fell in drops. It was so quiet that I felt like I was a foreign object. A foreign matter, foreign matter, foreign matter. It is customary for pets that disturb the atmosphere of a place to be crushed. Well, I don't know if that's common practice. <laughs> Again, I take a deep breath to calm down. To prevent the knife from slipping due to sweat, I regrip it so that it wraps around the handle. It makes me want to vomit. Something around my temples. The nerves seem to extend from the back of my eyeballs to my brain. My eyeballs are trying to crawl into my brain. Is my brain trying to swallow my eyeballs? That... <laughs> 
the, tra the, the, the translation of this is just so hilarious sometimes. <laughs> Biting back a dull ache, I walk down the hallway in the intense heat. There it is. My eyes hurt. My head feels heavy and I feel like I'm going to collapse. Yeah, I know this one. It's the feeling you get right before you collapse from anemia. Uh, uh, I want to. I couldn't take it anymore, so I took off my glasses. The elevator came into view. A, a long corridor. There are more than 20 meters from here to the elevator hall. That's a long way, I thought. I could go back, I thought. Well, no turning back now. Something. I also knew that a few more steps and there would be no way to get back. Oh, here we go. There was a sound. As if to disturb the harmony of this clean, lifeless space. The elevator chimes rang. It was so ominous that I stopped in my tracks. Only sight can stare at things uninvited. The lamp stops. The box arrives. I see a line on the elevator door far ahead. Oh, it looks like multiple lines. No, it's... It was so dense that it looked like a wall of spots already. The door opens. The narrow steel box opens. Ooh. Ooh. Looks like some people got killed in there. In the box. It's overflowing with... The flesh of the thing that was alive just now. Ooh! -hoo. There's the dogs. Oh god. I stopped breathing. I was... I always wondered how this scene would play out after reading the original visual novel if we actually got some imagery for what was happening. Like, we did get some in the original game, but... For the most part, a lot of things were left to our imagination, so seeing this now is just like, oof. This is kind of how I imagined it happening. Just the brain refused to think. The lungs gave up their activity. A steel box called an elevator. The red flesh was pressed tightly together. In the middle of it, two dogs gobbling up the food. My vision turns bright red. And this is the... The, uh, th this is the same track that played in the original game, but slightly remixed. I actually like this one better. With a gurgling sound, red mucus began to pour out of the elevator. Yeah, I think that's called blood. In a sea of blood, people, bones, brains, fingers, and guts. The two black dogs were the only living things. No, oh, I... Reason is refusing to accept this scene. Shiki, why are you running away? It looks like you're backing away. <laughs> At the end of the corridor, in the elevator, dogs are rummaging through people's bodies. G gap in the elevator, through the vent leading to the floor below. A lot of screaming leaked out, which hadn't been there earlier. That is, if you listen carefully. Like the sound of meat being chewed. It could be a scream for help, or it could be the sound of human despair. Not even a human language anymore. My brain, which is directly connected to my hearing, thinks. I can't even see it, but it's in my head. Burned alive. The people will be eaten alive, and their appearance will be recreated. There was a man who noticed the abnormal temperature. The moment he opened the door to go outside, he was enveloped by the eerie fire that had filled the room and died. There was a girl locked in her room, crying her eyes out. The flames that came up from the lobby filled the floor. The girl was in the bathtub, ashen from the inside out like a steaming fish. Oof. How does Shiki know all this, by the way? <laughs> there were adults rushing to the elevator as fast as they could. There were dozens of people in the elevator. They were no longer human beings, and they ate the adults as much as they could. And of course, nobody from outside notices this. <laughs> the screams were split in two. Fear of being eaten, and despair of being burned up. No one is an exception. Under these feet, in this big box called a hotel, 
that was the part of the hellscape that was so familiar that I could feel it on my skin. I feel nauseous. But I can't throw up. I know that if I do that, I will become one of that Red Sea. I resumed the breathing that has stopped. I bit my teeth hard to regain my self-control. The dogs in the elevator notice me. The next thing I know, the noise from downstairs has stopped. <sighs> in other words, does that mean that there is no one left alive? Well, that was quick. The two dogs begin to run. Uh oh. In this hunting ground, I was the last prey. A black dog is coming towards me. Numerous lines are visible on its body. My paralyzed head doesn't send me any instructions to fight or flee. The first black dog bounces. Its speed is unmatched by humans. The 20 meter corridor took less than two seconds. Oh Jesus. The black dog's mouth opens. The fangs, which were aligned like saws, came toward my throat. Reliable and fast. The moment I was able to recognize that it was coming. The black dog's fangs made a gurgling sound as it bit into my throat. Ooh. Dead end? Tonoshiki is dead. Or was he? No, that's not it. It's wrong. This won't kill me, and I won't die. I don't hesitate even when people are dying. A hot summer day. It was a long, long time ago, or maybe seven years ago. I'm sure I've witnessed much more devastation than this. Oh, well, yeah, you would be right about that. Oof. Zaku. He thrust the knife into the forehead of the black dog that had bitten him on the neck. The moment the fangs touched my skin, just before they dug into my corroded artery, automatically, my arm moved. I'm disgusted with myself. I wasted no time in threading the knife between the dog's eyes, as if I were a machine that could only cut things. Because that was the line of the first dog. Normally, when the animal's brain is damaged, its movement does not immediately stop. The muscles that had already received the signal from the brain would execute the last possible command. So if I tear my head open a little here, the black dog's fangs will bite my neck off. Yeah, well, usually. But the black dog is dead. Death is a stop. When he was killed by me, he lost all potency. The first dog falls to the ground. Here comes the second one. In turn, the second one jumped at my face. I thrust my knife into its open mouth. The blade was buried in the flesh. The outer skin of the dog was hard, but the inside was soft. The bones and flesh are literally rotting. But this was a mistake. This guy's line is not on his face, but on his chest. If you stab him in the mouth, it's just a laceration. The knife reached the back of the head from the inside of the black dog's mouth. Naturally, the hand holding the knife ends up in the mouth of the black dog. Ugh. The black dog is still alive. Its jaws are closed. The soft joint of cartilage between the hand holding the knife and the arm was about to be bitten off. The pain finally brought me back to some sane thinking. Are you kidding me? Why? I'm about to stick a knife in a dog's mouth and get my arm bitten off. I am. Ugh, this! I struggled to pull my arm out. The intense pain that grated on my arm sent sparks flying all over my vision. The dog's fangs had sunk into my arm and would not come out. No matter what, the black dog was full of energy, even though his head was pierced. Well, it's not a normal dog. The black dog shakes his body and forcefully rests on top of me. <coughs> I fell to the floor with a thud. But I still couldn't pull my arm out. 
The black dog was still pierced by the knife, but he still put pressure on his jaw. <clears throat> My arms are being ripped off. I can't believe it. A dog is not a creature that can chew on things in these conditions. Come on, come on, come on. Slippery feeling. If you look, you'll see blood spilling out of the black dog's mouth. It belongs to a black dog with a knife through its head. Or was it the blood that flowed from my arm, which was about to be ripped apart? To be honest, in my confused mind, it doesn't matter. No. I try to escape, but the black dog is still biting my arm. You can't run away. You can't escape from the beginning. I have no choice but to run. I just want to survive. If you want to survive, there's only one thing to do. Cut the line, Shiki. Cut the line of death. In other words, all we have to do is kill this thing. So what do we do? One arm will be eaten off in a few seconds. The knife is held by its arm. I'm being pushed down. Even if I were to pull my arm out of the way, the next moment the freed black dog would bite my neck. <laughs> In that desperate situation, a humorous smile appeared on my face. It's okay. Look carefully first, then think carefully. That's the kind of teaching you've been following all this time, haven't you? See, for example, you can see more than enough lines behind the dog's head. In this way, the way to survive is always simple. So why the hesitation? This is a violent animal. This is a man-eating beast of prey. But this is one light that is so close, so suffocating that it burns with every beat. The bite on my arm becomes even stronger. It's stupid. Too stupid. It's so contradictory that I want to kill it. In a providence that kills if you don't kill. I don't know why I'm human. Do you hesitate to say that it is a cruel act? I don't think it really matters. It doesn't really matter when your arm is about to be ripped off. A trickle of red blood fell onto my face. Red blood dripped down my forehead and slurped into my eyes. Ugh. The vermilion darkness seeped into the back of my eyes. Ugh. A vermilion color that scorches my vision. Hot mucus that I missed some time ago. I was jolted out of my reverie. Still, I'm not. You can't kill something that's alive. What hypocrisy. You are killing a much bigger animal than those dogs and animals. Oh, right. But not that time. Tonoshiki was insane during Arcade. Even when I killed the first black dog, it was an event that had nothing to do with my own will. But it's definitely my own choice now. That's what the teacher said, Shiki. She told me to use this power at my own will, not anyone else's. So... As long as I am who I am, as long as I am a decent person, I should never take life for granted. It's also hypocritical. Because you did it a long time ago. Oh. Bad dreams as a child. Look, what are you hesitating for? It was a hot summer day. And if I don't kill him, he'll kill me. In front of my eyes is the shadow of a boy covered in blood. You're already... I have hot, hot red blood on my hands. You've killed someone once. Ah! <laughs> Shit. I stabbed him. Instead of pulling his arm out, he buried it further into the black dog's head. A cry of pain echoed in my eardrums. 
The black dog's fainting resembled a high-pitched woman's scream. You can't wail properly with your arms stuck in your mouth, but you're crying. I'm sure it hurts that much. I don't care. He plunged the knife deeper into each bitten arm. The knife emerged from the back of the black dog's head. Split the skull, cut the skin easily, and it sprays blood and brains all over the place. And, t and to top it all off, my arm holding the knife has already gone completely through its head. Still, the black dog is alive. There is only one thing to do. Stretch out your other arm. Ripping the knife from my bloody fingers, I rehold it in my left hand. The dog's whole body rasped pleadingly. The power was drained from his fangs as he apologized. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the dog can, can is, is verbally trying to apologize right now. It's like, I'm sorry for trying to kill you. I don't know. Oof. I don't know, but I still killed him. It's kill or be killed, buddy. I looked down at what was life. The dog's jaws that had been covering my arm were easily pulled off. What? You're not biting into it at all. I look at my bloody arm. The bite marks were left on the school uniform, but the, but the gouged flesh was no more than an inch deep. The large amount of blood belongs to the black dog that was pierced through the head by me. The pain of the bite was insignificant, and my fear only made the pain feel many times worse. <sighs> I lay down on the ground and look up at the ceiling. My head hurts. The world became full of splintered edges, and I could see the lines of death everywhere. My hands and feet are cold, but my only reason is seething with a fever. <laughs> Nearby are the bodies of two black dogs. One arm covered in blood, a red knife in the other. And countless human corpses on the floor's lower levels. I have to laugh. Because this is not real. This can't be real. So I'm normal. It's perfectly normal. It's this dream that's crazy. When I wake up, everything will be fine. Yeah, but when did I start having these dreams with my eyes open? Uh-oh. Someone else is coming up. Kinkorn. There was a bright sound, terribly out of place. Elevator? Another box arrives, next to the previous one. The exhausted brain does not consider what it means. The door opens. Even though my mind was not working properly, my body automatically brought the knife back to my right hand and stood up to face the tragedy that would happen after this. Oh, I'm so disgusted. Once again, the iron box is opened. Some of them are. Empty? There was nothing in it. I guess you could call this a letdown, too. The danger has passed. Even though it was already all over, I could still get a grasp of what was going on downstairs. I was about to turn on my heel and say, there's then there is no reason for me to stay here. <laughs> oh my god! Who? 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 A woman's voice, helplessly ridiculous, rang out. The voice grew louder with the sound of footsteps. Definitely. A survivor runs up the stairs in the elevator hall, gasping for air. <sighs> Yay! No burning here! I can hear the jubilation. The sound of shoes never stopped. The owner of the voice appeared in the elevator hall as if rolling. You! Hey, you there! She notices me in the hallway and starts running again. Yes, I'm saved. I'm saved. Her face, which had been drawn together with fear, be began to glow with joy. Huh? A pale hand pulling that hope back to hell. 
No. No, no, no. A woman's voice looking at me, begging for help. Jesus. Yeah, I kind of figured that was about to happen. Oh. There was no resistance at all. The restraints were not contrived. As soon as the hand grabbed her, she lost con she lost her consciousness, as if waking up from a dream. Stop. Don't do that. A woman. Oh. I have nothing to do with this. She had nothing to do with it. She was just a good girl. Until now. Now she's going to be a zombie. I'm not going to prey on you. Stop! Ah, uh, too late. There was no time to call for a halt. I, it won't change when it arrives. I stare at the woman's neck. The stars seem to scatter in my eyes. My vision becomes clearer with unprecedented anger. Two bottomless evil eyes spinning in the blood of rage. The woman's limbs twitching. Uh, 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 uh. The woman's face lost its emotion, its vitality. It must have been the first time he had seen it. It was my first time, but I didn't need to be taught what it does. Okay, I don't know why I translated to that. <laughs> why I translated to that. I can even hear the gurgling and swallowing. After enjoying the woman for a while, he discarded her carelessly. A woman shimmering like a dead tree. A ballerina dances perilously close to the edge of death. On your pathetic back. There was no scream. The only sound was the sound of bloodshed. Cracked back. Blood spurts out. The vampire breathes a sigh of relief as he bathed in it. The world will change forever. The physical temperature and reality finally match. A film of flame enveloped the corridor. Like a river rushing through a weir. My skin is getting dusty and burnt. If you breathe now, your lungs will definitely be burned. But something was wrong. It's burning. The flames are definitely flickering. And yet, the building was not on fire. I'm the only living thing that can feel this fire. I have a headache. He starts to walk towards me. He is the source of the river of fire. The closer he gets, the hotter the atmosphere gets. Now it's only 15 meters. Even at this distance, I'm having trouble breathing. In other words, the creature will die just by getting close to him. A skinny shadow walks up. A strange appearance, elegant clothes in a barbaric cloak. Something that looks human, but is clearly not human. Everything is out of alignment, it's crazy. 13 meters. He comes at me in silence. Yeah, this is definitely reminding me a lot of Nero, except it's a little bit different. I think this character does have some unique qualities to him that's very different from Nero as well, even though this scene from, you know, kind of plays out similarly to how it did in the original game. I glare at the man, knife at the ready. No response. I wonder if he can see me in the first place. Ten meters. I stare at him. In the boiling flames, I visualize the line of death. What the hell is that? The inside of my skull boils like a soup. What is that thing? An intricate, swirling, dense torn of death. Like a jewel, shining brightly in the midst of it all. <clears throat> I turn away from too much headache. There's, that's no good. It's not good to keep looking at him like that. If you look directly at the sun, it will burn your retinas. If I look at that thing without being prepared, my brain will explode. Eight meters. 
the distance closes even further. The temperature rises, but still not enough to cook the meat. Six meters. At that distance, he stopped. His gaze focused on me. After coming this close, the man finally noticed me. Our eyes met. Don't make eye contact with it. The white woman's warning flashed through my mind. But I can't take my eyes off of it. I can't ignore that bottomlessness. That thing is different. It must be fundamentally different from the evil eye that the white woman was talking about. There is no such thing as an eye that has the power to blind the beholder, because it is the eye of a madman. It is the eye of a maniac, an ugly, helpless man who is driven by impulses, who is driven by his own abnormalities, who is a bastard just like me. My instincts tell me that I'm in danger. The alarm bells rang out. This is not good. But my body still didn't move. Not a single fingertip responded properly. Danger signals bouncing around the cranium. He complained that he had to get away from here immediately by any means in any way possible or his life would be in danger. But it's too late. The one with the sick eye that never paid any attention to me at all. I was burned to death by your hands. Or maybe not. Dying. Because those flames are real. The blue flames that wet the corridor are in effect stretched over reality. Even if you are swallowed by it, you will not, it will not kill you instantly. Perhaps it is the kind of phantom pain that only scorches life. But this is different. These flames are real. Just approach it and your skin will burn. Life is carbonized by the mere touch. It took the form of a sharp claw and released it. My body was cut in two from the torso and burned from the cut surface. A certainty that is clearer than fire. And yet, right before that... Whoa, what the hell? With a zap, my body was pulled backwards. Oh, well, looks like Arquaid became our shield. Arquaid? The question has escaped my throat. My thoughts went blank. I know the situation. I was pulled back by Arquaid, and at the same time, she stepped in front of me and received that hand. The act made no sense. Because it was supposed to be my role to shield you. Why is this woman hurting for me? It's... Arquaid's face contorts in pain. Yeah, this did play out a little bit differently, because I remember in the original game, Nero noticed us, but he just left. A hand of flame reaches out again and again. You don't have to pull me this time. Arquaid swung her right hand to flick away the flames, just as she had done once in the alleyway. But it's not perfect either. The flames could not be extinguished, and the aftermath scorched her surface. Don't tell me that a direct hit on... will burn even Arquaid. You think that's hot enough to lethally kill a woman who is the furthest away from death with an extremely low death ray? It lasted only five seconds. They were launched and intercepted in about ten batches. For whatever reason, the man lowered his arm solemnly. The man stares at Arquaid in silence. Arquaid stared painfully back at the man, her stomach turning bright red. The man has only Arquaid in his sight. She protects me and treats me as if I'm not there, holding the knife behind her. Steam rises from the man's mouth. After a few exhausting breaths, he groped under his coat with his left hand. I heard a faint metallic sound, a click. No doubt, it's a blade. There's a long piece of equipment hidden under that coat. It's probably the one that slashed the woman in front of the elevator. 
the man's feet move. With his blade hidden under his coat, he tries to take a step towards Arkwaid. Rude, if you are not a pig, name yourself. Or were your parents shapeless enough to not teach you the least bit of manners? I didn't know she could use her mystic eyes like that. The man stops in his tracks. I mean, would they even work on him? The light of my ego lights up in my ghostly eyes. In response to Arkwaid's words, which I couldn't make out, the man cleared his throat in a gasp. In a voice full of pain, as if he had forgotten that he was a living being until now. I know how to be polite. But you don't have a name to speak of yet. You have no manners, but you have enough shame. I've lost my original name, but you can at least call me that, can't you? You may have just taken over, but you're still part of the ancestors. The air changes. The blue flames burning in the hallway gained momentum. Did Arquade's words hit an unbearable nerve for that man? Vrove. The, the fire-spewing vampire was annoyed. Vrove Archangelus. Yes, I told him my name. I don't know that name. And since I didn't record it, I don't think it's a legitimate heir either. Could it be that my parents destroyed themselves? That's not true. I'm the one who killed the master. I'm just a new ancestor. So you want to kill me next and use me as a foil? Honor is something you have within you. I'm only going to take what I want. It's admirable that you're prepared to do that, but you should focus on me. That, this is a bit much. No, this city is unholy. If I don't burn it down, it's against my principles. Oh yes, in other words, they were like barbarians, third-class dead people. I'm aware that I'm crude. Princess of the True Ancestors, give me your heart. Oh god. Vrove, the surroundings of the vampire who called himself that distorted. The river of flames overflowing from his vicinity is growing. Arquaid's body became a bulwark, keeping me from being swallowed by the torrent. Don't move, Shiki. This flame is his weapon. If you don't want to be charred, don't leave my back. I appreciated the advice, but I felt an uncomfortable feeling that I couldn't put into words. This is his weapon? Really? Because after creating such a high temperature condition, the main body of that thing looks like... No, now is not the time. Hmm. Maybe he's vulnerable when he has the flames all around him like that? Concentrate on the knife and hold it up. It's coming. The hallway is now a cave of flames. Vrove unleashes the blade under his coat. What the hell? What? Well, that was a little bit anticlimactic. <laughs> he unleashes the blade and then walks away. Suddenly, he turned his back on us. He walked down the hall as if nothing had happened, and got on the elevator and walked away from this floor. No. I don't understand any of this anymore. Not the two dogs that attacked me, not the flames that covered the hallway, not the nightmarish reality that hit this hotel. Shiki? With a thought, Arquaid leaned in closer. It's a bad wound. The bleeding from her stomach has stopped, but her face is contorted in pain. That was only a few seconds ago. It was a scar she got from protecting me from that guy. Arkwaite, why did you do that? Yeah, I kind of underestimated it. I thought I could save Shiki and make it easy for me. That's what I'm talking about, Shiki. It seems that the wound that Shiki inflicted on me was not so sweet. 
I wouldn't think it would be. <laughs> Arquaid grinned, her face contorted in pain, and smiled jokingly. I can't watch. I don't know what to say to her when she smiles at me like that, even though the wound was caused by her defending me and I was also the cause of it. Arquaid leans back against me and tries to close her eyes. Wait a minute. What are you doing with your eyes closed, you idiot? Come on, you're a vampire who can't die at night. Yeah, but I'm kind of at my limit. What? I'm sorry, but you have to take me back to my room. Arquaid collapses. Her weight falls on my arm as I hold her. Wait a minute! No! If you die on your own, I really don't know what I'll be able to give back to you. No! Wake up, Arquaid! I call out to Arquaid, who closes her eyes quietly. And... Coo. I heard the happiest sleep I've ever heard, which made me feel ridiculous a second ago. And she just fell asleep. She wasn't gonna die, nothing was gonna happen. <laughs> I was worried about her, and lost it. It seems that Arquaid is just asleep. She said, take me to my room, you selfish bastard. But in this case, I had no choice. In the first place, it was a bad idea to stay in the hotel any longer. This is such a tragedy. Even if nothing unusual leaked out, sooner or later it would be known. The headache won't stop. I'm at the end of my rope. I put on my glasses to at least alleviate the headache. Arquid's room. Oh. There it is. I've only been there once, but I definitely remember the place. Then don't stay too long. I retrieved my luggage from the royal suite, took Arquaid in my arms, and left the empty hotel with a sense of shame. The sky was getting brighter. So that's it. The reason the man walked away was this simple. The sun was already fully up in the city. Before I knew it, night had long since fallen. Anyway, I need to give Arquaid a break for now. I can't, I can't get a cab. These two suspicious people were bound to be remembered. I got as far away from the hotel as I could and boarded a bus for Soya Station. Fortunately, it was early in the morning, so we didn't get noticed. The emergency exit in the back was still the same as the day before yesterday. I guess neither the residents nor the janitor noticed that the key was broken. 6.30am. I snuck into the room of the self-proclaimed vampire woman, just as I did that time, and finally realized that the long day was over. 